What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're doing an old cable car or a street tram, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing, but either way I saw this image on Google and I thought it looked super cool so I wanted to recreate it. Now this video is a little bit longer than usual just because the size of the model, so I'm not going to spend the whole time actually talking, the majority of the modeling part I'm just going to actually let it play out since it's the same thing over and over again with all the different shapes. But I will be jumping in here and there just to explain some of the things that I'm doing and the reasons behind them. But I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's just jump into it. Alright, so starting off with the cube, I'm going to start blocking out the main shapes. Now, I didn't know exactly how I was going to go about this, so I'm just trying to plan out exactly how I'm going to tackle this model. Now, I quickly just realized since all the sides are basically the same, I can just work on one side and the front and then duplicate those faces over just to save myself a little bit of work. So here I'm just going to start moving things around and start blocking out the main shapes. So for anyone new starting out with 3D, models like this can seem a little bit overwhelming just because there's so much going on, it's like where do I even start? But when you really sit back and stare at it, everything's made up of pretty much just a bunch of shapes, like a bunch of cubes and cylinders that are scaled differently. So take your time in the blocking out stage, it'll make the whole process much easier. So just keep in mind, it's going to look bad for a while, but as you slowly add to it, it will slowly come to life. Just don't rush the blocking out stage or you can make your life much more difficult than it has to be. So just take your time and things will slowly work itself out. So here for the front frames, I started with duplicating those side ones just to start creating the front. Now I'm going to skip ahead just because I end up deleting this in a few minutes and just doing it a different way. So just to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to fast forward.
So like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go ahead and delete those window frames. I thought it would look a little bit cleaner and better if it was actually built for this object, this edge or border that I just created. So I'm just taking my time, not rushing anything, especially in this blocking out stage. Things can quickly become disastrous by adding a lot of polys. So I just want to make sure I have these shapes right and then I can keep moving on.
Now that the main shapes are there, it's time to move on to the wheel. Now I want to make sure I get one of the wheels correct and all the sizing accurate just so then when I go and duplicate it over I don't have to come back to redo things. And then I can come back to the main body and it can just help me proportion everything better when actually those wheels are in place. So starting off with a cylinder, I can start blocking out the main shape of the wheel. And then I can start adding objects to it and increasing polys and beveling some of those edges. But like I mentioned, just taking a little bit of time to make sure I get this first wheel correct. So bear with me as I'm creating this model. I don't have any schematics or dimensions for anything, and I'm just going off of a reference photo, and a lot of these little objects about these wheels in the bottom part is very small, so zooming in you can't really tell exactly how things are connected, so a lot of this is just guessing and making it just look cool. So I'm just going to spend the next little bit just getting these shapes right, and or at least what I think is right.
So here I'm just going to take all these objects, duplicate them, and then flip them over to the other side. Because I'm working off of a photo reference, sometimes it's hard to tell the proportions of things and the actual scale of the objects. So by duplicating it to the other side, it can just help me see how things are looking in proportion to one another. So soon enough I'll just delete these, but I keep doing this throughout the model just to help build the object and see how things are looking.
So right here, I actually quickly stopped the video just to go take my dog for a walk. And when I came back, like always, I forgot to actually hit record. So the only part of the video that was missed that I actually didn't record was just the front part of the cable car right below where this little like rack is where those wood panels are. Now all I did for that was just scale out a few rectangles and then just put them into place. But I just wanted to make that note just if you're wondering why I jumped ahead there. That's the reason why I blame the dog. Um, it was a little distracting, but I luckily caught it in time, so we didn't miss too much. So, jumping back to the video, I'm going to keep working on blocking out these shapes and continuing the modeling process.
So one of the things that could have saved me a little bit of time on this model was actually all the objects that are underneath. Now I wanted to fill in all these areas with random objects just because there's so much going on in this train like underneath where all the wheels and everything is. But because most of it's going to be in shadow in the renders and it's directly underneath, you're actually not going to view most of it. So I could have definitely saved a little bit of time on cutting back on most of these objects that are just not going to be in view. So I thought I'd make a comment about that now just because if you're going to be following along and recreating this model, you could probably cut a few corners with just removing a few of these objects that are underneath it, but just something that can save a little bit of time.
So things are coming along nicely, but I did realize because there's so many windows and because you're actually going to see through them, the inside of this cable car is going to be completely empty. So I want to fill it up a little bit more to make it look a little more realistic and a little bit more interesting to look at. So I'm going to start blocking out a few shapes. I'm going to add two rows of benches on each side and a steering wheel and just a simple low poly chair at the front. Like I said, just to add a few more objects, just because those windows you're actually going to see inside, I don't want it to be completely plain and bare on the inside, so I'm going to start blocking up some shapes and not spend too much time adding too much detail.
All right, so now quickly moving on, I went ahead and duplicated all those objects like this one side and that front face I was working on just to the opposite side to complete the whole model. So as you can see, the cable car is relatively done. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit more to it. I thought it'd be a little interesting maybe throwing it on some train tracks and adding a few pieces of grass around. So I'm gonna go ahead, start off with another cube and then start blocking out the train track. Now I didn't know exactly how I wanted to go about this. I just was going off of one of the images I saw online, so just playing around with the shapes and moving things around until I found something I was happy with. Now, I know I keep calling it train track when this isn't actually a train, it's a cable car, but these things look like train tracks and I don't know the actual name of these, like, I guess, tracks that they run on. But anyways, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to keep working on these tracks. So I tend to not actually do the UVing while I'm doing the modeling just for the video, I just want to show you how I put them all together, but just to save myself a little bit of time, I quickly did the UVs on these bolts and this one strip of metal just so I can duplicate it a bunch of times down the train track. So I'm just going to quickly add just a planar projection to the bolts just so I can put them in place on the UV map and it'll save my time coming back and having to redo all my work. Which is also something I recommend you doing to save yourself a little bit of time in the whole modeling process. Just remember to do your UVs first before duplicating things and it can save you a lot of time. So for the final touch on the model, I thought it'd be cool to add a few pieces of grass just to add a little bit of detail. So to do that, I'm going to take advantage of the content browser. Now I'm going to go down to the grass section and just select the grass that I like and add a few of them into my scene. I can then convert those into polys and I don't have to worry too much about the UVs. I could just add an automatic UV, but to be honest, I just was really lazy and just threw it onto my UV map and just because it's so small in the scene I can just add a plain color to it and no one would be able to notice so that's exactly what I do here I just add a few convert those into polygons and then just put position them into my scene now I was a little bit lazy I actually place one that's through one of my metal poles so as you're placing those just pay a little bit of extra attention and make sure that they're not crossing through any of your other objects but yeah, that's how I went about it. Using the content browser, it'll definitely save you a little bit of time if you can take advantage of the already built-in assets. So all I did here was an automatic UV, and since they were on their own UV map, I had a lot of room to work with. So with Control L, I can just lay them all out, and that way no piece of metal would be overlapping another one. So the exact same dirt and grunge wouldn't be repeated, and that way it would just look a little bit more realistic and just take advantage of all that extra UV room.
Okay, so that's basically everything for the modeling. I'm just gonna go position these pieces of grass into place and then I'm gonna go and show you how I did the groups and how I uv this object. Now, I only did five different texture maps. You could obviously add as many as you'd like, but I kept it a little bit practical, I thought. Um, it'd be a little more realistic not having like 10 plus textures and obviously you can get some really nice resolution with that But it's just not practical for other cases. So I cut it down to five different textures the first one being the shell um, And the roof and all the outside objects the second being the windows and the window frames the third being the wheels the under components and all the inside objects and then the last one just being all the other little pieces that were on the cable car since there's so many little guys I thought I'd just make its own map for all of those. And then the very last texture just being the railroad and the pieces of grass. But keep in mind you don't have to keep it to five different textures so you can go way more or way less depending on what you're using your model for so keep that in mind. But now that that's all wrapped up let's jump into Substance Painter and start texturing. All right, so now in Substance, I can go load in my FBX from Maya, and things are looking good, so I can go to my texture set settings, and then go down to Bake Mesh Maps. And there I can choose my output size, I chose 4K, and make sure to check that you use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, and then you can bake your textures. And now that's complete, I just have to remember to change my shader since I'm going to have some transparent windows, so top right corner, the shader settings, I can switch to Alpha Blending, and then add an opacity channel to my textures. Now starting off with a smart material as the base, I can go tweak some of those settings and start working on my first texture. Now I didn't want to spend too much time getting the color like perfectly dialed in. Um, I just want to get something generic in the look that I was going for and I can always come back afterwards and start tweaking those colors and those settings when the rest of the model starts getting into place. So once I've found the color I was happy with, I can right click, set it to a black mask, and then start applying it to all my meshes. And now starting off with another smart material, I can start applying textures to my other meshes. So that yellow material wasn't looking exactly what I had pictured in mind, so I decided to go ahead and hide that layer and choose a different smart material, and then start tweaking some of those settings just to get something a little closer to what I was looking for.
next step was working on the windows. So since we changed the shader earlier at the start of the Substance project, I can go ahead and add an opacity channel to this texture map. And then I can choose the glass film, one of the built-in smart materials in Substance, and then I can apply those to my windows. Now because we changed that opacity channel, I can actually see through them. And then I can go ahead and just tweak some of those dirt settings, just not make them as grungy and so worn out. But a big reason why I actually added all these windows onto their own texture map was just to get that detail. Um, if they were very small in my UV map and they were part of a different texture map, you probably wouldn't be able to pick out this nice detail and that grunge on these windows. So that's just a little bit of the reasoning behind that. But since those are looking good now, I can move on to my wheels texture. So starting off with another smart material, I can start tweaking some of those settings. Now that the wheels are done, it's time to move on to the inside. Now I knew most of this wasn't going to be in view or a lot of it would just be in shadow so the textures weren't too important but I definitely wanted to add some cool wood textures to this so I'm going to spend the next little bit just applying and going through these textures to get something I was looking for. But it was a little bit challenging just because they were so small in my UV map. Um, I just condensed all those parts into one UV map so the resolution is quite low and the panels for example on the floor take up the same space on the UV map. So it's a little bit challenging to find a material that didn't look like it was repeating itself too much, but I just spend the next little bit tweaking some of the settings just to get something I was happy with. So things are coming along, it's time to move on to that fourth texture map. So what I'm going to do for the next little bit is just copy over some of my textures from my previous texture maps onto this one and then reapply those to my different meshes. So I'll speed up the next little bit as I just apply those materials.
So here I noticed in one of my references how one of them had like this white that was painted around the wheel and I thought that would be cool to add on this model just to give it a little bit of a different color on the bottom since everything was black. Um, so all I did was just start off with another smart material and then using the same projection tool but this time switching it to faces, I can go select just those faces that I wanted to be white and just apply that to that mesh. Okay, so the train itself is looking good. It's time to move on to that last texture map, which is the train track and the little piece of the grass. So I'm gonna go choose another smart material and just start tweaking some of those settings till I found something I was happy with and then I can apply that to my metal track. So last but not least was just those pieces of grass. Now, like I mentioned before, I actually didn't UV those. Um, I was a little bit lazy and just didn't feel like doing it. And because they're so small in my UV map, you honestly wouldn't be able to tell. So I'm just gonna go select one of these grass materials I found in Substance Source that's just already in my library. And I'm gonna go apply those to my pieces of grass and then just tweak the colors till I got something I was happy with. And, and like I mentioned before, because it's so small, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make sure that the color was accurate. So at this point I thought the model was basically done and then I realized I actually forgot to do the labels and the numbers. So just really quickly I'm going to add just a plastic material and then choose an alpha that I was happy with and then start pasting in those number 19s all over the model. And there's no real reasoning behind the number 19, it's just a number I like so I decided to go with that. So I wanted to give this train some sort of name or some branding along the side and that big square rectangle sign that's on the top as well. And none of the alphas were working for me so I quickly jumped into Photoshop and made my own. I just called it the Poly Render Express and then I just dragged that alpha right into my substance project, signed it to an alpha into my current project. And then I could just, just like I did those number 19s, the same process, just choose a different alpha which is the one that I custom made in Photoshop and then I can go paste those right onto my mesh. And then at this point, just like usual, I never know really when to quit. I thought it'd be cool to add a little like detail or some decal that's on the side. So I went in and quickly Googled some like old border graphics and I found one that looked pretty interesting. We dragged that into Photoshop just to scale it a little bit smaller and thinner and a little longer, like those rectangle panels that are on the side of my uh, cable car. And then once I found the siding that worked for me, I had the same process as the other ones, just drag those right into my substance project, sign that as an alpha into my current session, and then I can just paste those directly onto my mesh. And then finally with the eraser tool, I can go select a different dirt brush and then just erase some of those decals that I actually put on the side just to make it a little more realistic since the painting and the wear and tear on this model is 
you know, pretty drastic. You don't want to have some really clean fonts that are pasted on top of that. So just with that dirt brush, I can go just start erasing a few spots. So here, just quickly jumping in the renderer to see how things are looking. And I want to make sure that that floor height is brought up right to the bottom of my model. And then I can go back in and start tweaking a few settings. So that's basically everything. I'm just going to go mess around with the environmental maps just to get some lighting that I was happy with that would help those textures pop. Um, but that's basically the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this cable car or city tram or whatever you want to call it. But I had a lot of fun making this and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.